Recording is on. Welcome to Geek Style Governance Discussion for April 7th. Um, starting first with uh, the proposal roundup. Um, on mainnet, there are currently five uh, proposals boosted or pending boosted. Uh, three of these are uh, treasury diversification proposals, one for SUSD, two for USDC, and then a combined one for SUD, SUSD and USDT. Um, and once these are executed, we will hit the $3 million of stable coins in mainnet treasury there. Um, I think the last one will pass sometime in the weekend. Um, but once we get that, that'll, that'll kind of just have the $3 million of each of those outlined in the original proposal on uh, in, in treasury. So um, I think we'll talk maybe a little bit later about the next treasury authorization proposal. Um, and But that does not include stable coins that are in swapper on xdi or in mainnet which i think is about another like 700 800 000. um and then of course there is the big proposal that is slated to pass in just under 30 hours to halt the bonding curve uh so by halt the bonding curve this means that the uh the proposal will adjust the minimum investment amount um to something really, really, really high. Um, I can't see how many dig digits there are, uh, Augusto. And there's like no zeros either. It's like, just like it's, a bunch it's of- It's the maximum, it's the maximum integer that you can put oh. in, yeah. I wonder how it's a, like- it says, It's literally as high as it can be. So I don't think Ethereum will inflate that, that big. Yeah, it's just, I was trying to look at the proposal and like, this is like, I guess it's 18 decimals of that. So whatever that amount, that would be how much it would require to take in new ETH to mint new DXD. Um, so once that passes and you know, there's 7.95% rep in favor of it already. Uh, so we won't be able to, uh, so that's slated to pass. And once that pass, it'll essentially make DXD uh, fixed supply because there won't be any ability to mint new DXD. And so uh, I think same thing with DXD. There's also funny because like we have fractional. There's a fractional token out there because it's like the total supply is like 149 point, 149 thousand point like two six or something. And so I guess we'll probably like stay on an extra point two six token for eternity. But anyway, this is exciting. This is like a big change. It's actually almost like a almost a year to the date. I think April twentieth was when DXDAO voted to launch the bonding curve a year ago. And then it kicked off in, in May, the next month. So uh, a pretty wild, uh, wild ride for the, for the bonding curve there. Um, I don't know if anyone has any thoughts on the proposal or we will do, um, people saw on Twitter, there was, uh, Zed had done a fun pause image. And so we kind of sent that around yesterday and then we'll, try to do, uh, and we'll have a Medium article about the passing of it, um, probably go out on Friday. Cool, and then the other mainnet proposal is uh, update to Swapper uh, to Alpha 6. Um, I think this is gonna pass in the next couple hours, and this includes the network switcher. Um, there, so Swapper teams have been cranking out a lot of uh, a lot of stuff, and so this is a new release. And I think Omen had just had a new release that passed, uh, I think, over the weekend there too. Yeah, it also some... includes um, bow swap into the eco running the next time, um, which is kind of cool because it's like got twenty six million. Well, it's got the biggest pool of liquidity. And it's like untouched. Next it's basically like no one's tr not not that many people are trading on the funds because the funds have like come into bow swap to be state to earn bow and the actual like trading interface for bow swap is that not not uh too up so i would be really interesting to see like if swapper like how much of bow swap volume swapper is driving but that's uh hard to figure out yeah we don't know that because there's no analytics or tracking like in uh yeah in like a regular web two site you'd, you'd have these kinds of data but we don't uh we don't do it because it, yeah I think mainly the main blocker is like, is there a decent, if, if we could find a decentralized way to do it in a transparent way where no single person could like own the data, then we could implement something. But uh, yeah. but yeah. 
I just love this as a description of like a something that DX Ventures can fund. Like we're kind of constantly running into these things of like, oh wow, this is a tool that like we would have, but of course, like no one out there has it because no one has like the unique need of us. So I think this is oh, there are other ones like that where we can fund people that are building things for. Yeah. I mean, like that's like a pitch there. I guess we can do like the for like 10 years, startups were pitched as like whatever for Uber, like pizza for Uber. And so I guess we can just do the the decentralized version of a lot of these things. Um, um, see if people will be building them. Cool. And that's it for mainnet. Um, looking at X. Yeah. Chris, on that, uh, I guess it's slightly related, but that example of a specific need that DXDAO has, we, uh, I think, and we have we have a couple other ideas <clears throat> that we've been talking about recently, and I and we got to figure out the best way to like write that up as a like a like a memo. I I kind of think of um, at Amazon like apparently Jeff Bezos makes everyone with a new idea like write a two pager. If if you can't put the whole idea on two pages of like what is needed and why it's good, then you shouldn't be able to talk about it, right? So if some if like there's an idea that someone thinks is important. If someone that light really wants to push that idea I can create this two page memo that could kind of become a bounty or a call, to, like I call it a call to build and we could put money behind it and we could put it out into the community and we just need to find someone who's interested in or maybe is already working on similar things. And then if they, if they're all of a sudden they're like, well, that's kind of what I wanted to do anyway. And DX, DX Ventures wants to fund me to do that, like I'll spend the next six months building it. That's kind of how Uniswap was built, right? Like we just need a kid with that's willing to build it and we can fund them and he can make what we need, but we need to like communicate what those things are in a better way. Cause right now we just like talk about them, but we don't, there's, you can't show it to someone, right? Exactly, Shark Tank or similar, but we, we can initiate it. We just need to communicate it basically. Yeah, I think that would be a great idea for like, you know, specific problems that the community feels are like high priority or, or there's like a kind of a clear need for and we don't have a solution for yet. Like actually just kind of creating, I could, I think you could even do it in less, right? Probably like a one page, uh, you know, a couple paragraphs, just describe the problem and like have a standing, like kind of like request for proposal basically. Um, and maybe even with some amounts tied to that. Definitely. Um, and I, I love the memo idea in general. I think that's like a good way of capturing information. Um, I think Amazon does it where like they make people read it before you start the meeting. So it's like there's five minutes of silence while everyone's reading what the meeting is about and then they have the meeting. Um, but anyway, um, okay. And then on to XDI base, um, there are 13 proposals boosted or pending boosting most of these are related to uh, a swap or liquidity deposit. There's four pairs that we're putting in. Um, so there's eight proposals total. Um, one, each of the uh, pairs have a funding proposal and a liquidity provisioning proposal in the multi-call scheme. Um, this, all of these pairs already have existing liquidity on Swapper. And I think this is, will uh, just top up all of them. Um, it will make, I think, all but the WEF DPI pair the largest on XDI um, or close to it. I think the, the bow swap has a large WEF DP, DPI pair, uh, but um, we should have the largest, after this uh, proposal goes through, I think it's in two and a half days, we should have the largest WEF XDI pool on XDI at like 600,000. Um, and then just as like a shout, I did also just post uh, a proposal yesterday about an additional round of liquidity to go into Swapper uh, in those four pairs and then an additional pair for stake, just because that's the um, the native token for XDI. So if you have any thoughts on like the next round of Swapper liquidity um, directed to that, that uh, thread. 
Yeah, and then there's just a bunch of different work proposals. Uh, Caden, Gemino, Melanie, Venki, myself. Um, we did. We are still kind of getting uh, better at uh, getting proposals through and boosting. Uh, we had a, have had a little bit of a clogged proposal queue over the last uh, week or two. Uh, a lot of that is because of these liquidity proposals, and they like clog clog things up. Um, and yeah, if you have any, um, I think I noticed. I think. Federico's proposal might have become unboosted um, recently. Um, I wasn't sure if it was that one, but remember that the amount of gen you need is not based upon the current number of boosted proposals, but the number of boosted proposals in 24 hours after you stake. Um, so if you want to make sure it gets boosted up, um, make sure and, and calculate that. Um, additionally, on XDI, we've had also have had some problem with Alchemy syncing with the graph. Um, so we had some issues on this on Friday with proposals not showing up. Uh, I know this was tough for a couple of people that had uh, were doing their proposals for the first time and good for the whole process of submitting and then uh, it doesn't show up. But I think we've got all of that uh, settled now. Um, and yeah, that's it for XDI. I don't know if there were any thoughts or questions on XDI proposals. Cool. Um, yeah. Um, and then just moving on to regular business, um, just to give a brief update on that, the gas refunds. Um, we had uh, posted the list for Q1 last week on Thursday. I think there was some, uh, the script was not picking up everything specifically as it related to redemption costs. And all redemption costs are actually. Um, uh, like incurred by one address. Um, so I'm not, uh, we're trying to figure out that precisely what that is and then we'll update the amounts and then we'll get um, we'll get the amounts and then we'll do a proposal um, and fund those again on mainnet. Um, Nico, I don't know if you had any specific thoughts or if you had any like, did you figure out why redemptions are being done through that, that one contract? Uh, yep, I indeed uh, checked it. Mm -hmm earlier today um, and it's interesting something I wasn't really aware of they're uh, kind of like two different um, contracts depending on what you are actually redeeming so let's say it's Eve or it's um, uh, DXD uh, you are using another contract as if you are using um, an external contract and that's the reason. So we actually just had one of those two contracts in the redemption scripts. Um, and I am currently in contact with DAOSEC for the other contracts. It's unfortunately not verified yet on mainnet, which makes it a bit more complicated to see what's actually going up there. But I hope the DAOSEC um, team can help and verify that contract and we can update the um, Redemption script there as well to take those transactions into account. Cool. Um, well, thank you for figuring that out. I know that's that's kind of a, a pain, especially because if it's unverified, I guess that means it doesn't show up on like Etherscan or or uh, anything. But uh, um, cool. Well, hopefully we'll get that um, uh, solved in the next uh, week or so here, and we'll get the the refunds out. Next, um, just wanted to, on these calls, I thought it'd be kind of a good opportunity that we just kind of have a check-in with HR and people mover stuff. I think we're still figuring out what we're calling those things. Um, so there's kind of a lot of things going on in terms of tracking, working on making the proposal process better for, for people. Um, Melanie actually just submitted her proposal through Alchemy and so went through that process. So um, yeah, I, I thought it'd be a good opportunity for on these calls to just have like a, a check-in with HR people mover stuff and whether Melanie Melanie has business or there's other questions we can kind of um, carve out this time in the call. So Melanie, do you uh, wanna give a brief update? Yeah, sure. And, I, and I'm definitely more than happy to carve out a time on this governance call just to, to talk about <clears throat> HR and like the contributor experience. So just an update about what we're doing in the people mover contributor experience squad. Um, Ali and I are beginning to track DXD payments 
for example, whether it's been issued or not, how much is owed and dates of proposal submission. While we will be tracking it internally, it may also be beneficial that each of you has your own personal record as well in the event that we contact you to just clarify anything. Um, also, we are aware that many, if not most of you, have not submitted your DXD vesting proposals requesting your payments. Um, mainly, this is because of the cost on of gas on Maynet. Chris, I see you raising your hand. Um, so yeah, we are aware. And circling back to worker proposals, we will be contacting you soon if we haven't already um, to let you know if you have any past due worker proposals um, and moving forward, alerting you when your next due date is coming up. We have also started to take a look and identify where we can add to the contributor hub. We, we will be adding a few contributor experience sections of our own and help with any, any additions to the current content. Um, and if there are any new contributors on this call, hello and welcome. Um, do not hesitate to reach out to Allie or myself with any general questions regarding onboarding and next steps with your proposal. Um, recruitment has also been a hot topic lately. So if you know anyone who is interested or fits the role of any of our open positions, let us know. We'd be happy to engage them. So that's it. That's what's going on with us. Cool. And yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be a really, it's really helpful even just already in terms of having Melanie and Allie just like walk people through the process and be comfortable like going to them and asking questions. And like, I guess the word like hub is thrown around here in terms of trying to create a contributor hub where people can go for information. Um, but in a lot of ways, the hub will be like Melanie and Allie themselves, right? Because they will be, um, a lot of the communication flows will be going through them. So I think they'll be great resources for people that have questions on like very uh, random random things because they'll start to aggregate all of those inputs. Um, and so, uh, yeah, and I think in terms of the proposal process, I, I think we're, um, we're gonna be making it so uh, the contributor experience is much more smoothly. I like that. Uh, that phrase, mm -hmm. contributor experience. Cool. Any any kind of HR related items or thing, the contributor experience related items that people want to bring up? Yeah, um, I just I just added a new topic on DAO talk. It was like fifteen minutes ago before the talk, where. I'm, I'm requesting a new type of uh, compensation based on the work that I did this month. So, yeah, I just, I, I just did, I check out with other, with our DXL workers. So maybe this will be an interesting, uh, I don't know, thing to add on the, on, on the contribution guidelines where uh, when I submit, uh, when I created the, uh, this out of topic or I was talking with another, um, with other DXL workers, they were asking me, so you are going to stop being a full-time contributor? Or are you going to be a contractor now? So I won't call it like that as a contractor. I think that maybe the contribution guidelines are missing some a part where it can allow the worker or the contributor here to be more flexible. So they can still be attached on the organization, like join the course, talk with other uh talk with other people right now you know b is still engaged but in their own terms and how they see fit so yeah this may be something that we can explore like we have workers and we have full-time people who are committed and who have uh, who are working a lot and, and they have their hours work and uh, and they're organized the way and you have contributors that uh, they are individuals or companies that they're going to be part of the XL, but maybe in in our, in our terms, right? So it would be interesting if we can explore those type of engagement in the in, in the future, maybe in the following months. Yeah, I think it's a great point not to put um, some things on the contributor experience plate, but I think um, we are due for uh, overhaul might be an aggressive word, but a, a large update, I think, to the contributor guidelines and the compensation guidelines in general. 
Um, and I imagine that's something that uh, maybe is not like the first thing we can challenge right now, but in like the next month or two, um, I think we need to take a more like systematic approach systematic, to how we're systematic, systematic approach. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. definitely. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. A refresh, a refresh is, a, is long overdue and completely understanding that people's circumstances in their life change and we need to be flexible and, you know, updating to accommodate people's just lives is something that we can definitely do. So thanks for bringing that to our attention, um, you know, and putting that front and center center when we think about um, reevaluating what we currently have. Yeah, even, even more here, I just wanted to also mark that this is an organization that we have workers spread all around the world, working in different cities and with different lights, with different, uh, you know, with different lifestyles all, all around. So it's not like we are a company based in, I don't know, Bulgaria, right? Where we know everyone who works in Bulgaria, we know uh, what time do they eat, like, you know? So uh, I think flexibility is, should be very important here because, uh, yeah, we are spread all around the world and we need to be flexible too allow everyone to uh, become the exact member. Yeah, I think the way you did it was like actually very um, positive for the DX down. Like you contributed work and then asked for compensation. I think we should even like encourage and uh, be very positive about that and really try to make sure that people who put work first and then get paid, like we need to make sure that they there's like a like a ninety nine percent chance that they will get paid. And uh, well, it's a uh, well, it's a labor version of member balancer, right? So the idea being you're committing first, and then you're kind of like trusting that the DAO will will uh, do. And I think like Augusto, I think flexibility is a good word. I think scaling is another good word. Like we need to figure out how we can scale to more contributors. That means different types of contributors. That means a whole bunch of different backgrounds. Um, and I think the current system is not necessarily one that can scale to meet all of our needs. Um, yeah, and also, like adding to what Hero said, but on what do you work? I mean, uh, maybe you work on something that is super useful and helpful for you on DXAO. But when you submit your work and you ask your compensation, it's like, meh, you know, this wasn't so important for the rest of the community. And suddenly you get like, okay, but I want to get paid for it. But this is what it wasn't so but this is not on our roadmap, right? What if I know a new contributor appears, hey, I built this awesome dab, and they show it and they say, I want you the exile to have it. And we see it up and it and it is shit. Like, you know, so we need to, I think it's awesome to work and then be paid after that but we need to organize ourselves to work on what's it or what is important for the exam or, or at least not to lose track or sight on our mission definitely but it, like i i want to make uh, sure that like the people who commit their like full-time work we need to find a way to uh, reward them for that, right? Like they are not as flexible as Augusto. So we need to make sure that those people who commit fully should get rewarded for this. Yeah. Yeah, I and just back to this, the same thing that I've harped on before, but whatever you put in your proposal as far as scope of work, and if you want to make it a milestone completion or you want to work full time, like we can discuss like how we want to compensate people for, for full time work versus more just like contractor contractor work where it's a, a limited scope of like a deliverable. But you can just state that in your worker proposal, you know, and you get feedback from the community about how much you want you'd like to be compensated for that. And if we all agree upon it, like you've been doing a gusto, I well, there's no reason that we can't go forward with that. And then, you know, you get your first 50% payment at the beginning. And the question is, is, you know, what you promised to deliver, did you deliver it at the end? And usually 99% of the time it's yes, and you get the second payment. But if it's questionable as to anybody, if they, you know, followed through on what they said they were going to do, then yeah, the DAO may or may not pay that person for their work. That's just like, right, like any, any, that's usually just how, just regardless of where the company's based. 
that's, I think, how it's going to go. And that's pretty damn flexible, I would say. Hey, do you see my hand being raised? I don't know. It's like super small on my screen. I saw it. But yeah, oh. that's good. Okay, so uh, I, I actually uh, like us to, to maybe start talking about one thing we discussed uh, earlier this year, and it's about team tokens. Even though we don't have team tokens yet, uh, like having team goals where a whole team can complete something, a milestone as a team or a squad, uh, where we, yeah, like first of all, can have a, a, a nice reward to get people joining us uh, or to, yeah, compensate hard work, right? So if we have if we have goals uh, set to dates, maybe I think we should reward reward that kind of work uh, outside of our original pay. And maybe it's easier to have that when we have our uh, like let's say swapper token, an omen token. Yeah, I think both tokens and milestone based rewards are interesting. I've actually been meaning to write a post. Uh, on Dow talk about like milestone based rewards, and I think it could be cool to like yeah tie some extra like reward to like a job well done, something that makes like a big impact, and and like having that be sort of part of the culture. Um, I think the we token, also, yeah. I mean, we we kind of get the critique of hey, we're just on a payroll. And we're gonna pay from a DAO, and we we are the those like we can decide what we get paid and stuff like that. If we have, I would say if we if we try to reward ourselves with with the milestones, we can actually show like, hey, no, we're not just working and and draining the DAO, right? We we actually working towards milestones, and and if we don't complete them, we don't like reward ourselves with. Them. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I think that that would be very great. I was thinking, for example, like uh, the last uh, Omen release we had, for example, if we had the milestone, if we complete this milestone by this date, like I don't know, we would get like uh, some reward. Like maybe we would work over the weekend. Maybe like we were some insane hours to meet that, and then we would like get rewarded for it. You know, so it could be very interesting, like what it could bring. And like those milestones could like long term be like some things that bring us uh, value in our products in terms of uh, meeting goals faster and being incentivized. Yeah, yeah I think it's definitely like a, a multi multi pronged approach um, that we can kind of incorporate a bunch of different things to make it appealing and incentivize people in different ways. Um, we just need to think about how we kind of fit all these things um, together. Um, I do want to keep going because I know people are, are jumping to a meeting at the top of the hour. Um, I wanted to touch briefly on the new multi-call scheme installation. The Dow Talk post went up last week and there was some discussion last week on um, some of the parameters. And I just wanted to see if there were any outstanding questions on that that we needed uh, to discuss here. Nico, I don't know if there's any. Yep, I can at least give a short update. Um, so the things that we were uh, actually waiting for was that somebody deployed the Gnosis protocol relayers that uh, meanwhile happened both on XDAI and on Mainnet. We have the addresses for it. And then we wanted to double check with Frederico about the farming contracts, if there needs to be something whitelisted as of now, um, but we don't need it for now. Uh, so that means uh, the the path is cleared to set up the new multi-call installations, and I'm going to work on that today. Um, and hopefully, we'll push out the proposals uh, today. Cool. Uh, sweet. Um, and then. Uh, yeah, I think we actually already talked about alchemy graph issues, that there were some issues with the uh, alchemy in the graph. And I think not much to, else to report, except for we're working with Dallas Stock on trying to make alchemy on XDAI as usable 
as possible. And then um, this also kind of underscores the importance of working on DX to vote, which does not rely on the subgraph, uh, or it's not to rely on the graph. Um, so I think that'll be something that we'll be thinking about a little bit more and maybe trying to develop some resources into that. Um, I think particularly if we're thinking about DX vote, if we want to get a governance structure up on Arbitrum. So. Cool. And then, um, yeah, I'm just seeing DXD holder 24's comment in the, the chat. Yeah, I mean, I think we're just kind of talking about different ways of incentivizing people. Um, and I think our goal, um, because of the incentive structure now, is to drive the price, uh, drive value to DXD, um, considering most of individuals' uh, compensation is in DXD. Um, actually, one of the things that I want to talk about today in terms of driving price to, to DXD is uh, DXD buyback programs. So I just made a proposal, or sorry, a Dow Talk post on this today. I want to share my screen quickly. Um, yeah, and so this is supposed to be kind of the start of the process. And so I just wanted to kind of lay out some of the different things that we're trying to do here. Um, so we've uh, talked before about trying to institute a uh, buyback primarily because the value, the uh, DXD has not captured the value of the treasury's rise in value. Um, and so we want to use it as a way partially to reward uh, DXD holders and also um, to repurchase an undervalued um, asset. Um, so the way that I'm kind of, we're thinking of structuring this is basically this post would be the first signal proposal to convey the intentions to repurchase DXD according to certain conditions. Once that would pass, then we would move to execute that trade through um, separate proposals and it requires actually two proposals to actually execute trades with that. Um, so this is meant to be like the proposal that we basically kind of all agree to the, the program here. And the way that it's like laid out um, is if this, um, if this proposal passes, basically like this is the announcement that we would want to um, kind of convey to everyone. This would be the public facing announcement. It'd be like DXDAO has agreed to this. And this is the conditions that we'd kind of be like publicly putting ourselves out there. And that's what we have for like the announcement um, page and that would detail the specifics of the program and everything like such as that. Um, and then we have uh, several different like risk and considerations or documents and disclosures that we're working on here. Um, so there's uh, a bunch of these, sorry, the Tammy's been putting together a lot, uh, most of these two. So we've been working on, on this um, and also with Dave uh, on some of the treasury stuff. Um, but the kind of additional documents we're trying to put together are one, this consolidated, consolidated balance sheet. Um, and so this is where some of the DXD payments uh, and regular payments that we're, we're missing comes uh, are, are really important. So um, we need to update these numbers, but I did my best actually to go back and look at um, some of the payments that may be deferred in both DXD and also people that have not done their proposals. So I've estimated that here. Um, and then, yeah, this balance sheet is just looking at the main net treasury, the X die base, the buyback reserve, and you know it's kind of landing on this final value here for net assets, um, which would be 30, uh, 37.9 million. Um, and this is what, um, uh, this would be what would be considered like book value um, that we would be, be having there. Um, and there's, yeah, there's a Google sheet with with all the supporting information on there. As I said, a lot of that is based upon uh, so the value of the treasury and different in X die and, and, and elsewhere. Um, but it also includes some estimates on the liabilities in terms of DXD compensation and regular compensation for the last couple of months so that we can have an idea of that. Um, as I said, the risk factors, it's a document Tammy put together that is, oh, I'm denied. Um, it's got things you should be scared of and be fearful of because they're risks. Um, and then we have a governance overview document that just intended to kind of provide um, uh, some information on DXDAO and how things operate, how rep holders kind of exert, um, uh, exert influence and also outline the uh, move to governance 2.0. 
Um, and then DXD average trade volume. Um, this is just a supporting document to show how much like on-chain volume there has been for DXD. Um, I had pulled this about three weeks ago and it was 162K. Um, and so I think it'll be actually about that, but I need to, I need to update that information. Uh, and then this is a document I have not produced yet, um, but I want to have a technical explainer for um, uh, a technical explainer for the like GP relayer. Um, and so this will be, uh, I actually have some of the bases I think from the relayer um, that I worked with before, but this will kind of just provide very um, specific details on that. And that's actually the one I think I need to, to work, we, we need to work on the most here. Um, and just in terms of like next steps or the things that we're, we'd be hoping to do. Um, so presenting briefly today on the governance discussion um, and then I think there's a, a couple different things uh, we need to discuss, but hopefully we can discuss in the forum here on the call and uh, reach something. Uh, I'm hoping to get a this proposal submitted next Wednesday. Uh, and then corresponding to this timeline, um, we are installing the multi-call ins scheme installation, which Nico just touched on. And when that gets um, launched, it takes 17 days, submitted, it takes 17 days to be fully in, in, uh, installed. And once that's fully installed, then we can actually execute the trades. So presumably this signal proposal will pass while the multi-call scheme um, is being installed during that 17 days. Um, to discuss today, like, I mean, I think there's, there's agreement that we need to do this to uh, kind of return uh, value and, and given the, the, the state of the treasury. Um, but to discuss today is like details of the first trade um, I've put 35K at a 2.5% above Uniswap top, top price. Um, that's based upon using 140K average um, trading volume. The definition of book value. Um, so for book value, I've included everything um, on, on DXDAO's balance sheet, except for things in the buyback reserve, because we can't actually control that now, but including like Swap or LP tokens, um, stable coins, everything in that, and also on, on XDAI. Um, and then it would be good to discuss, do we want to do this as a signal proposal on XDAI, or do we really also want to do it on, on mainnet? Um, and yeah, and then other, other thoughts. Um, so yeah, what are kind of people thinking about this? What are the uh, steps um, or really just these, these kind of discussion points here? Yeah, I'm curious why we should do the buyback on mainnet. I think that's, there's more DXD on mainnet would be, but I'm not opposed to that. I think the, I think the deepest pool is still on balancer, but the XDI one is very close. The next I swap her one. There's certainly more DXD on mainnet. I mean, of course, like the vast majority of, of it still is, but I mean, I guess in either case, the orders are going through Gnosis protocol. So like the arbitrage would have to happen across in the Gnosis protocol anyways. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's not unreasonable to do it on XDI. I'm not sure. Yeah, it all depends how big the discount is, right? Like if we set a 5% discount on XDAI, it will clearly, like it will be cleared the, the order probably. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking it would just, I mean, I just had 2.5% above, um, obviously like the, this will be public information. So someone would be able to manipulate the price like before it would you know, execute. So there is some risk there that we'd have to put a ban, but yeah, I mean, do we need, what would the premium need to be? Or maybe we just kind of try it, try it out, right? If no one bites then. Thoughts? Any? Can we, and we can only can we do one trade per, per 
proposal or we could do two, I guess. Uh, on the GP, GP relayer, you mean, Chris? Y yeah. Um, so with the multi-call, we actually can batch uh, trades. Uh, we haven't done the, the GAS uh, fee tests, how many actually go into one proposal, but I would say like five to seven would probably even be possible. And we can set uh, certain uh, start and end times. Um, so we could, in theory, create five trades uh, and set the early state they, they can be executed on GP. That's possible, yeah. Yeah. So we could alternatively do that, like set 100K to the relayer, um, send 100K to the relayer and then do that across four trades like every day. And so then the trade would actually only be 25K a day. Would that work? We'd set the time over. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. Yep. That would work. Uh, Nico, do you know if the Gnosis protocol has a limitation in terms of trading, like clear, clearing uh, limit value? Uh, I know that we have it on mainnet. I think it's like two, yeah. two and a half K. Do we have that on XA too? Yeah, uh, so the background uh, for that is like the gas fees on mainnet. And that's why uh, Gnosis at some point decided to only submit solutions from the solvers over 2.5K value. And that's on mainnet. On XDAI, we don't have that limitations uh, because gas costs are almost free on, on XDAI. So wouldn't that be a big argument for doing the buyback on XDAI? Because it will allow like small people to participate. I actually really like the XDAI idea. It's more of like, will that require like additional implementation or like considerations? And I think like from my perspective, I'm just trying to like, what do we, what's the quickest possible move? Cause I think like executing on this move is the most important because it's, I think it sends a signal to the market. Um, but I do like XDAI if that's doable in without yeah, too much extra work. I thought we actually like always do this. Okay, we test on XDAI first and then on mainnet. I expect we already have everything ready on XDAI, right? Uh, yep. Actually, um, the GPU really is deployed both on XDAI and on mainnet, and it has already been tested on XDAI as well. Cool. I mean, we could just change this a little bit to, you know, this is because this is supposed to be like the signal proposal. Uh, initiating the buyback program, but this is separate from the actual proposals that would do the buyback. So we could just say that the buyback program is active on XDAI and mainnet, and then we could execute through both. And like when we're actually executing, it might be cool to do the first one on XDAI kind of as a test, and then could do others on, on mainnet, but we would have the flexibility to, to do both. Yeah, I like the like, especially like just seeing, uh, like, I actually expect we will have way better results on XDAI just because, like, I remember participating on the ICO on MISA and then, like, you're moving stuff into MISA and then you don't, you're not uh, lucky. Then you wasted 200 bucks. And on XDAI, you actually didn't waste anything. You just moved a little bit of stuff around and actually tried to participate. And then you're not, not annoyed uh, of not, like, not winning the game. And on mainnet, it will be probably different. Only like bigger players will, will participate. And GP Relayer runs on XDAI? I guess I like, thought there was some. But anyway, we can, that, that would, we'd have to ensure that that's running. Um, yeah, the tech is there. The Gnosis protocol is on XDAI, and the Relayer can work on XDAI. Um, I don't know, though. I mean, I think since most of the existing trading volume is on mainnet, that's an argument to keep it on mainnet. There's also a little bit of a price discrepancy uh, between XDAI and mainnet often. Um, but yeah, I don't know. 
I mean, the liquidity in general is not great anywhere. Um, I think the the result of the buyback will be that we that we finally provide liquidity on our own, right? So I think once we have the buyback, like the first action of the buyback done, we can start putting liquidity into into the game. And I think the well, more we do it, the better it will be. So I think liquidity is an interesting dimension to this too. And, and there was some discussion about this yesterday in the Discord. Like, um, like lack of TXT liquidity is a problem, right? And and I think the way to address that would be through an incentive like a liquidity mining campaign um, or liquidity I from think, treasury. But yeah, I guess I think we can do both, right? Like I don't think you can't like do one buyback. Like you could do a 25K trade, you could do a 10K trade. And I think like the signal of that independent of its effect on liquidity is incredibly important. And then I think like once we signal that, you know, D and kind of convey the value that DXC is, is capturing, then I think that's also like the way that we increase liquidity uh, at large. But I, do, I don't see how like the current liquidity landscape is affected, like why we couldn't do a 25K trade in this liquidity landscape. You can do it. There's just going to be significant slippage, right? Um, unless more liquidity comes to play. But yeah, no, I mean, we can... I, I'm not saying that it doesn't make sense, but like I think it's a separate and but also it's a, it's its own problem that liquidity is not good, and then it's sort of related to the buyback too, right? Because ideally, like we'd be doing it with like decent liquidity. Yeah, I just I mean to DXD holders' point here, like I, I don't want us to kind of like stand still, and I want us to like move forward, and like I think executing on this in whatever fashion. Um, oh, he left, uh, is like, how do we do it quickly? Yeah, like, I don't, like, the the XDAI, uh, propo like, that we do on uh, the first buyback on, on XDAI is actually not pushing us back in any way. I think it's actually uh, better to, to do the first thing on XDAI just to see how everything works and that it actually works. And, like, we should actually do both. Just try to buy back on both sides. Cool. Um, just in terms of next steps, um, some of these docs need to be updated, um, but comments, um, I think the one thing, big thing to add that I'll try to add to the, the post is the X die because that was not included in that. Um, and then like, hopefully we can have feedback and comments for the next uh, week and then try to get this into a signal proposal um, by next Wednesday. I was happy to talk. I thought we were talking about DXD. <laughs> like we were talking about supporting the price of DXD. So it was kind of the things. And I think all feedback is is good. I think we we should be open to feedback. But I think it's like we want to like stay focused on the task at hand, which is literally responding to that that feedback. So that was. Yeah, and that. It's, good, it's good to hear this feedback. It it is a little tricky when it's an anonymous person that comes in for the first time in a long time. And then just complains, but he doesn't give to, to Violet's point. He doesn't give any any suggestions on like what we could do to help accomplish what he's trying to say, other than the the three things that we're talking about already that are trying to do the same thing, right? Like what else? Give us at least one idea that you have or something, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't. The, the the feedback today in the chat maybe not the most constructive but i do think it is like indicative of a certain market sentiment and it's like something that we need to be keeping in mind right and when with everything that we're doing it's like a yeah, yeah and, and feed there's I lots of John, like feeds already, we need to have yeah Go ahead. john you already made the, a good point that uh if you uh yield farming programs will already like give an answer to what can I do with my DXD? And that's, I mean, that's the market sentiment. Everyone can, can let their tokens work. And I think it doesn't hurt for us to actually give out some tokens to appreciate our DXD holders. 
Yeah, I mean, I think there's a good opportunity to do that coming up with the next release of Swapper, not the one that's going live today, but the, the upcoming one that includes um, farming. And I think it could go in parallel with the buyback. Yeah, I, I want to, um, next week, I want to start another post that's about a DXD farming campaign. That's the same thing. And, and we, I, we tossed around some numbers there, uh, like last week, DXD has gone up a bit since then. So it, it should be um, better, but um, just getting that process started um, so we can figure out how to do like a very targeted farming campaign for Swapper and um, on both XDI and mainnet and just allocate some DXD for that. Not something that's widespread, but something focused very much on the DXD ETH pair. Um, and then like to DXD holders, um, like questions or complaints, like I think a buyback program followed by a DXD farming program on Swapper multi-chain is a, is a good way to drive value to DXD. And I think that's like where we're headed for the next month. Yeah, that was actually just the, the last point. I know we got people running to the, the kind of treasury I wanted to chat about just because we had uh, discussed last week. And I guess, Sky, you had not, I think I saw a draft of a treasury authorization proposal, but maybe that was just an internal draft. Um, and yeah, and then we're having the meeting tomorrow will be a Q1 treasury update from, from Dave. Um, but at Gusto, I think like lending ETH is, is like a good, is like part of that. Um, but I think we should be climbing the risk ladder and that's earning yield on the assets. Yeah, we should. Uh, maybe we can go on the But yeah, sorry, continue, Sky. Oh, I was going to say, where where do you think is a good place to lend ETH? I think we'd all like to know. Yeah, exactly. That is something that maybe we should do an analysis and see how decentralized uh, uh, these DeFi protocols are. And um, again, we should start with the low, uh, with the ones that had the lowest uh, the, the lowest revenues because those were actually going to be the more realistic uh, ones. For example, now looking at them, if you are lending Ether at an 8% uh, uh, revenue per year, like that is, uh, that is not something where, how can I say, uh, you, can, you need to have control over the, over the Ether. So we need to find uh, the file lending protocols that are completely decentralized, check out their smart contracts also, uh, came up on a strategy of how are we going to lend the ether and how are we going to claim it. So uh, there is a lot of logistics around it, but we should start exploring that at least with, with a small amount. Yeah, I guess yeah. for example would be would be a good place to start. We check out compound smart contracts. We see uh, how, which function that we need to make to the compound protocol to start sharing, uh, to start lending some ether and later we claim it and we do the entire procedure, we test it and we see how it works. Yeah, I think in general, doing that with some of the stable coins that we are accumulating, like actually have yield, like it's very, very hard to find yield by lending ETH actually um, in the DeFi system. And if you can, it's usually really risky. So I think we're going to start with um, dollar-based. I mean, I, I agree we could do both, but like 0.3% on ETH at Compound, like we're not going to, we got a lot of ETH we're not going to sell, right? Like that's something. But um, to your point, I definitely think stable coins are, are what we're looking right. for now, but I definitely think we should be looking for safe ways to earn yield off of ETH. That's something. That's something. Even on ETH, and we can send it straight to the DXZ uh, to the DXZ token contract. That will go uh, straight directly to our reserves. So uh, I think that we should explore both, like stable coins and uh, then in Ether too. Federico has got a fun idea of upgrading the bonding curve so we can lend ETH to it. Um, yeah, I think upgrading the bonding curve makes a lot of sense. It's just uh, there's a lot going on already, and it would be a, a major undertaking. Yeah, we here we should be very careful about the the, the economics of the uh, the token economics that the cure was designed around, which I think they're 
they are pretty solid and we haven't been using it. But yeah, we need to figure out what, what are we going to do with that. Uh, I, again, I think the reserve of Ether is, if something that the DXD holders control is the reserve of Ether is the cure. So the more, the higher reserve of Ether that you have on the cure, the more happy they're going to be because they don't have control over any other asset or on the exact only on the ether reserve on the cure if you take that away from them yeah cool um but let's um chat about this again tomorrow um and think more about eth as opposed to just the stable coins too also nylon had something he said about this eth too also yeah also just to finish we have been talking about uh, uh uh, for some time about using DXZ as a token for our holographic consensus. So that's something that we are actually doing now on Rinkeby. And when DX vote appears on XI or on Arbitrum or, or whatever, or Mainnet, the plan is to use DXZ for holographic consensus. And that will give, uh, well, uh, already a strong use case because you are going to need DXZ to boost proposals. So it's going to give some appreciation. I don't know how much, but that that will happen any anytime soon yeah i think that's great it would even be fun yeah i'm thinking about this with arbitrum too if we dx vote but um we need a dx vote call or something because i don't know I'm just thinking more and more about it and it's kind of like uh are yeah, we doing yeah. it tomorrow after the meeting oh that's right there was a no. that's <laughs> um <laughs> okay. so that was tomorrow tomorrow after the weekly okay. dev call. perfect I'm stoked. I'm excited. Um, cool. What um what else? Awesome. Okay. Thanks everyone. Have a good day. Cheers. Bye bye. Yeah.